Hello, good afternoon, everyone at the Cities Conference. We are three people from Allborg presenting uh, work package six, main work and results. My name is Kurt Felling. I am uh, accompanied today by Louise and uh, Jakob, who have uh, completed their PhDs uh, in, inside the work package six. And uh, we will tell you about uh, the main work and the main results. Our presentation is called Simulation and Planning for the Future Smart Energy System. And that's what we've also looked at, has been the main theme of, uh, of our work package, work package six. The main theme for the work package has been about coordination. And uh, coordination is sort of a, a theme throughout all the work and has become apparent that this is a very, very important aspect of uh, future energy systems modeling and also planning. So coordination is a technical issue, how to coordinate technologies so they um, optimally work together and uh, can be integrated in the smart energy system. But coordination is then also as a consequence, a planning issue and uh, an issue for energy policy because uh, this technological integration and coordination has to be enabled um, by, uh, by the political and institutional framework. So we've looked into both of these aspects and um, the main message and the main contribution from our work package is that um, a greater uh, attention to coordination of the energy system, the various aspects of the energy system is uh, technically beneficial and is also needed. Um, for instance, uh, we've looked into um, the issues of how to coordinate energy systems across countries and across sectors. And we have found that um, if you want a really smart future energy systems on a city level and a country level, you should both look into cross-sector integration, meaning um, the integration of heat, electricity, uh, gas and transport sectors, as well as into cross-country integration the exchange of electricity across countries using transmission, transmission lines and interconnectors and such. And uh, that is uh, one of the key messages coming out of the work that um, if you ignore uh, one of them, if you ignore cross-sector integration, you will potentially end up with very expensive solutions and, and over-investments. Um, so the other message is that um, due to these more complex technical constructions that we see are coming uh, as a consequence of planning smart energy systems, we can also see that uh, this requires new approaches for planning and, and uh, energy policy uh, for energy systems. And we, our, our message here is that we should also have a better coordination across planning levels um, to enable um, cross-sector integration and uh, these kinds of kinds of issues. Yes, and uh, I would like to present some of the work that I uh, did. Uh, my name is Jacob when I finished uh, the PhD uh, in the Cities Project. So one of the main outcomes of, of my work when I did my PhD was uh, to develop a tool for the software energy plan where it is possible to investigate how do systems interconnect with each other. So that means both in terms of cities to countries and also country to country. So on different geographical levels, how is it possible to integrate uh, energy systems uh, or interconnect energy systems? So this is a, a tool I developed. It's a screenshot from it here where it's possible to define different energy systems and run parallel operations of both and then see well how well can these two interact. So meaning if you have excess renewable energy uh, for wind turbines, for instance, in one system, it's possible to uh, send it over to the other system. So you can actually see if you have urban plan, plans for urban energy systems, well, how does then those, those systems interact with the national surrounding energy system? Um, so this facilitates both our cross-country uh, energy systems analysis and also our how does urban systems link into uh, to the national energy plans. Um, so we can compare uh, the analysis needed to, to make some of the conclusions that Carl uh, mentioned on the previous uh, slide. Yeah, so when I've done, finished the tool, uh, I made a number of analysis also in my uh, PhD. So one of the things I looked at was 
uh, how does when you do energy system analysis, how does it operate? Uh, how can you implement single technologies in that? So one of the things I found out was that if you look at, for instance, energy savings, and when you do energy planning, it's important to take the energy savings and, and the contributions from that into an energy uh, system perspective, meaning you need to make sure that when you look at the benefits, it's not just uh, on an average level, but you actually see then you do savings in the district heating system. If you do heat savings there, it also changes how the CSP plant, for instance, could produce. So you need to allocate and con connect savings across the sectors. So that was one of my main findings. Another main finding and what I spend most of my PhD on is looking at these interactions between energy systems. So here it's important to say, when I looked at cities, I, I made an energy plan for, for cities and energy systems model, and I did that too for a country. And when I combined those two and see, well, what are the benefits? There's a clear advantage and it is possible that for cities to plan within a national context, but it's also important that the, con that the national system takes account to what are the cities want, want to do, what, what are the goals for the cities. So keeping those two in mind, uh, we get a good uh, potential for actually system synergies and it is possible to, to both make local planning and national planning, uh, at least from a, from a technical point of view. So we can develop local smart energy systems that do not hinder our national targets of becoming CO2, neut uh, CO2 uh, neutral in 2050 or reducing 70% of our CO2 reductions in 2030. That is possible and it is possible where there's room for making some concrete perspectives, but obviously the cities and the municipalities have to take into account what is the overall national goal. And just as, as well as that, all the local action is probably going to happen in the cities, so the national targets have to allow for that, for those things. Uh, so what we can do is that the smart cities, they integrate demands, they make sure that they have, what are the demand planning, how do we supply, and they balance the local energy. So if there's some renewable energy locally, it should take care of that, but obviously it has to be done in a certain way. So if you have a city like Copenhagen, they do not have where there's mostly municipal uh, living areas, urban areas, where there's not a lot of land, Well, they can do some things in terms of demand and demand reductions, while they cannot put up a lot of wind turbines because they have to be placed somewhere else. So that whole coordination has to happen at, a, at some level. So I will tell about what I've looked into in my pieces as well. And uh, it builds upon what Jacob just said. I'm looking more into the more societal parts uh, and political parts of uh, this coordination. So what I did, I looked into the strategic energy planning um, and the barriers or challenges we find in connection to that uh, to develop a new way or a new framework for how we can conduct strategic uh, energy planning in a Danish context. So. What I did, I looked into or identified some barriers uh, connected to the strategic level and a practical level. The strategic level, that's the national level uh, where we have uh, national plans, uh, national energy plans for the complete country uh, and legislation and support schemes and stuff like that. And then we have the practical um, barriers, which is at the local level uh, connected to local governance. Uh, and local geography. So things that can only be handled locally, that could be also be um, resist resistance towards uh, different energy technologies um, and things like that. So in order to um, overcome these barriers, uh, I have to develop a new framework for how we can address uh, the coordination barriers in the transition of the energy system uh, through strategic energy planning. Uh, and that is kind of my framework is what is shown here, where we have five, five steps just to show, but we have something where we look into the levels, uh, coordination between levels. We have a national level uh, with the strategic barriers, and then we have some more local levels, uh, regional, municipal and cities level where we actually have to put uh, things into place. Uh, and then we have a lot of things that should be connected to the geographical uh, 
area of the municipalities uh, and what their uh, strategy for the energy system is. Um, and that should be put into place in the strategic energy plans uh, and scenario analysis, like what Jacob presented before. Uh, and then implementation. How could we actually implement these things? Uh, and that should be seen as a dynamic process where we always have to think about what is where we're going with the energy system and what do we need to change. So this should be considered all the time. You have to go back and forth and talk between the different levels in the strategic energy plan. So in terms of strategic energy planning, it's also important to look into how we can engage the local communities uh, at the local level. And uh, what we've been looking into is um, how local ownership can be put into place. Uh, I've been looking into a center for near shore wind turbines where an organization tried to build in with 100% uh, local, locally owned projects. And what we found was actually that this is very difficult and it's very, uh, the tender rules are very closed and mostly open for larger commercial uh, companies, um, which makes it difficult to engage the local communities. So what we came up with was some um, suggestions uh, to increase the choice awareness uh, by opening up the tender processes to include more uh, non-private uh, Actors early in the processes, they should be invited into a di dialogue from the beginning so you can actually create more awareness in the local society, but also a kind of ownership feeling. So design a renewable energy center so that they are actually allow uh, these uh, new actors to uh, be involved and own these uh, projects uh, and thereby also support locally anchored pro uh, projects uh, in the tenders. Um, thank you, Louise and Jakob, for, for your inputs here. I should maybe add, if this hasn't been said before, that uh, Louise's PhD was also uh, conducted in collaboration with Work Package 4. Um, to conclude, of course, the work is not done, um, and I think we have we have opened up for for a very uh, large amount, good amount of interesting future research, and um, within both domains. First of all, we have um, the area of energy modeling at the mm -hmm. municipal level. We can see that this is often a very academic exercise, and uh, we would really like to find ways to engage and really maybe train and develop a, a new generation of municipal energy planners, really. There's a great need out there for people who have this understanding of uh, smart energy systems and can, can analyze it and implement it in practice. And um, we as academics uh, from the Cities Project, we would really like to contribute, to contribute here. And this, for instance, uh, requires that we also get better at developing tools and methodologies for, for municipal energy planners to use that are not too abstract and take too long time or are too complex to understand. Um, so that's definitely one area that could really facilitate this coordination between um, technical energy planning at the local level and the national level, because then you would have this understanding already ingrained in the municipal planners. Um, there, then, then there are some, some areas that really already now require actual coordination before, in order to avoid overinvestments. And, and one of these areas is district heating. We are in Denmark um, very heavily um, moving, very quickly moving into uh, fourth generation district heating, low temperature district heating. And, and we can see here that, that we are in some cases are hitting a barrier where we have houses and buildings that are not able to handle low temperature district heating, which requires uh, really a coordination of, of the demand side and the supply side. And th these issues are already apparent now, so, so we need some immediate action here. Um, we can also see that, you know, 
new approaches from uh, from from you know the transition uh, literature and so on might also bring in some benefits to municipal energy planning um, where people often are used to you know running or running things according to certain procedures and rules and, and here things like co-creation could maybe uh, have the potential of opening things up and, and really um, bringing in the knowledge from all these energy sectors that, that we so nicely put into our models and, and want to have a coordination for, um, that you know more actors are actually getting involved and, and that you really get this societal coordination going and you know tools like co-creation could maybe help and we would really like to understand more about uh, um, if the usefulness of these approaches. And, and the final message maybe here, or the final at least need or idea for further research is, is based on what Luisa just presented, that um, we can really see what, what we would like to ask the question, what, what is the future of, of, of citizen energy and energy de democracy in, in, in smart cities or smart energy systems? Um, how, how can we reconcile, you know, on the one hand, the commercialization of, of energy with, uh, with this, you know, need and interest of people to to get engaged um so and, and also to get engaged in large energy projects um so 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 i think this is really a need and, and we would very much like to collaborate with any of you um on some of these topics that was uh, our presentation from alborg i'm very happy to virtually be at the final cities presentation thank you all very much for listening um if you want to check some of the things that we've uh, written and worked on feel free to to contact us or just post the slide and see all these nice publications um bye for now and talk to you later <laughs>